This week we have superficial progress as Apple now allows you to order marijuana delivery. I'm DJ Alex, and this is your Hunky Vape 15 on Friday Vaping News Science and Advocacy Report for the 2nd of July, 2021. Yeah, you heard that right in the introduction. Apple now allows their app store to host apps for firms that deliver weed right to your front door. But if you want to quit smoking using a harm reduction product, Apple says that's not allowed on our platform. It's not allowed on our devices. Sorry. These hypocritical Puritans don't want a combustion-free world. They only want a tobacco-free world. You know, despite common sense, let alone science, proving combustion is the villain of society, our world leaders want you to ignore the obvious, go get high, pay more taxes, and move on. Just move on. Yeah. Goodbye. We don't need you. We already paid your taxes. You're high as a kite. That's all you should worry about in life. Yeah. I think this is a fake. I don't think this is real. This week, it's perfunctory progress. Because the only media focusing on the real bane of modern society is Arab news. And they asked their readers, can the Arab world contemplate a future without tobacco use? Meanwhile, in Japan, Philip Morris International vows to stop selling rolled cigarettes. In the next 10 or 15 years, is your head spinning yet? Why would a company founded in 1847 on London's Bond Street exclusively to sell tobacco and cigarettes, choose to end rolled cigarettes. Well, did you know that back in 2017, PMI established the foundation for a smoke-free world and they weren't doing it as a smoke screen? This philanthropic organization has committed on spending $1 billion by the end of the decade to smoking cessation. It's not just Bloomberg and the World Health Organization pushing their agenda here. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain, because while you're distracted, they're going to do a little side shuffle and gobble up the industry players who are standing where they want to be tomorrow. Are you confused yet? Or do you think that I'm talking about vaping products? Whoops, you were distracted and now Philip Morris bought out Fernton Pharma to expand their smoke-free products. PMI has invested more than $8.1 billion developing smoke-free products. So this 5.1 billion Danish crones that they just spent translates only to $813 million and is just another drop in the bucket to them. These guys know that the writing is on the wall for combustible tobacco. They know that year on year, smokers quit lighting up. And it has nothing to do with the fact tobacco product sales dropped over 16% from where they were last year. Nor does it have anything to do with a 70% drop from their highest peak in 1996. The writing is on the wall. And now they're embracing two paths for survival of their international corporation. Pharmaceutical products and non-combustion products. Well, except for cannabis. You're still allowed to burn as much cannabis as you want. But we'll get to that later. So, now that you understand their playbook, the next article makes perfect sense. Altria urges the FDA to clarify that nicotine does not cause cancer. Hey, FDA! You really need to step up your game and tell the people the truth! Nicotine does not cause cancer. Did you hear that? Nicotine does not 
cause cancer. Hello? Is anybody listening to this? Nope. Did it work? Nope. 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 How do we know that it doesn't work? How do we know that it didn't work? Well, would you be surprised to find out that most doctors think that nicotine causes cancer? Bullshit! And it gets worse. 83% of doctors think nicotine causes heart disease, and it doesn't. 81% of doctors think that nicotine causes COPD. It doesn't. The misinformation campaign by these Puritan hypocrites has gotten people to ignore common sense and totally ignore fundamental science. Well, getting back to Philip Morris and their associate company, Altria, now the people ignore common sense and everyone's focused on stomping out tobacco. It's time for them to make their little move. Altria gets into pot. No, I'm not talking about the pot calling the kettle black. Altria buys into Canadian cannabis industry. They sold a bunch of new shares of stock and bought up 45% of the shares of Kronos. So how is this tied to vaping news? Well, how about a Veil Vapor is now going to be selling a Veil Grow Kit so that you can grow your own marijuana at home. Everything you need is in one affordable $130 kit to germinate your own plants. Or you could opt for a basic $600 package or even the extra large version at $800. That includes a tent, lighting, filtration, soil, nutrient, seeds. You name it, it's in the kit. Whoa, well, dude, I don't want to grow my own shit. Hey, don't worry. Apple lets you have somebody deliver weed right to your door if you don't want to grow your own. Just pull out your iPhone, click on the app, and it's all yours, baby. Moving on to international news. Israeli smokers will soon find it much harder to light up. Yeah, okay. No surprise there, right? Wrong. The proposed legislation to combat smoking also bans the single most effective way to quit combustion. No vaping allowed. The Israeli health minister is following the World Health Organization's playbook to the letter. So when you hear no smoking, it also means no vaping. Let's keep on vaping like our lives depend on it, because they kind of do. And if you don't follow the ridiculous laws and the insane taxation percentages, get ready to have your product seized by law enforcement and customs. Just like in Malaysia, where the Royal Customs Department seized another shipment valued at 2.7 million Malaysian ringgits. And this shipment contained 1,276 liters of expired vape liquids that were going to be repackaged for the black market. I wonder if these government officials know that the black market expects a percentage of their shipments to be confiscated, and they factor that into their black market pricing of these black market items. Anyway... Vaporessa's parent company, S'more International, is now listed on Forbes Global 2000 list. There's significant growth for S'more. And even with these crazy regulations, they posted a compound annual growth rate of 28.1% by 2028. They're not even afraid of the upcoming Chinese regulations or the possible 400% Chinese tax hike. Outrageous. You know, in China, the largest vape retailer is Relics, and they have more than 60% market share. And there's 170,000 companies in the tobacco harm reduction field. Oh, and you know that Relics is listed on the New York Stock Exchange, right? So with all of that being said, I'm sure whatever regulations China is going to implement it's going to be good for the millions of Chinese vape industry workers and those people who own vape industry stocks. With the tobacco industry now starting to write their own exit strategy, analog is definitely out 
and digital it is it. Just like in Jamaica, where the leading tobacco and cigarette distribution company warns the government against excessive, hard-to-enforce tobacco laws, which only drive more businesses to the black market. You know, each incremental tax increase that they put out and each increased regulatory requirement that is imposed on this industry shifts more of this industry's sales from the legitimate side of things to the illegal side of things. And who's to say that the illegal products are going to be safe? They're not sold in regulated fashion in licensed distributors and licensed stores. It's being sold out of people's cars in the street corner, people's garages. Who's to stop that product from being adulterated? At what point is the taxation and the regulations imposed on this industry going to finally come to an end? The market has grown. It's going to continue to grow. We need more people to stand up before it's too late, where we could all end up like India or parts of Africa, where these ridiculous bans didn't eliminate the products. It didn't eliminate the sales of products, but it moved them and moved the people to buying black market items. And it's just a matter of time before somebody adulterates one of these products and somebody is going to die needlessly because of the regulations that were imposed. And that's why the next story comes from India where the Coalition of Asia-Pacific Tobacco Harm Reduction Advocates call out the World Health Organization's FCTC to drop this open system ban that they're calling for and regulate open system tanks instead of putting a ban on them. But more on that later, because now we need to move on to Canada, where the government is following the World Health Organization's playbook in driving more people back to smoking. And if the flavor ban gets adopted, it will literally kill every small brick and mortar shop in the country. We all know flavors matter. And 95 to 99% of vapors use non-tobacco flavors exclusively. So, I have two articles pointing out flavor bans, deadly consequences from Canada. Moving on to Dubai, UAE, where S'more International is partnering with ANS MEA to promote alternative nicotine delivery products and build their international distribution channels into the Middle East and all the way down to Africa. Back in the frickin' United States, Michigan can't leave well enough alone. And Senate Bill 572 aims to increase taxes to 32%. Well, except for the cigars that the politicians are smoking. Cigars are going to be capped at 75 cents. But everything else, including vapes that do not contain tobacco, cough up the tax money, punk. And they even changed the law to include liquid nicotine solutions right down to C10H14N2, including any salt or complex of nicotine. So now, even the synthetic nicotine is covered by this law. Oh, and so is marijuana. Meanwhile, in Maine, the flavored tobacco ban has been nixed from the supplemental budget because they finally realized kids hooked on nicotine who can't get it will simply get their fix from something else, like smoking or some other drug. Guess the San Francisco study in JAMA showing that the flavor ban doubled smoking in high school kids? Well, they actually influence some lawmakers now. And they actually see the obvious consequences of prohibition. Just like in Connecticut, where they realized 83% of adults vape fruit 
flavors, and 72% of adults vape dessert flavors compared to the less than 16% of kids who said that they chose vaping because of their flavors. You know what else Connecticut factored into their decision? Recreational cannabis. So I've got five things you need to know about legalized weed in Connecticut. And if you live in Connecticut, don't be driving to a Vail Vapor in Virginia to buy your grow kit because it won't be legal until July 1 of 2023. Meanwhile, in the UK, the National Institute of Health and Care Excellence published new draft regulations encouraging healthcare professionals to disseminate clear and up-to-date information for smokers to use vapes to quit smoking. Also, VPZ has opened another five new stores since I last talked about them in the news just a month ago. And this brings their total footprint in the UK up to 159 stores. And also from the UK, British American Tobacco has merged Vipe into its global brand views. Both products will now be interchangeable and with a year-on-year -year growth rate of 44%, British American Tobacco says that this is all about sustainable global growth. For our science segment, I have a Eureka alert from H. Lee Moffitt Cancer Center Research Institute saying that the public health potential of vaping can only be achieved if people stop demonizing use because vapors deserve to be treated with respect. If you want them to quit smoking, and from emory.edu, we have genetic risks for nicotine dependence span a range of traits and diseases. In other words, and if you're not going to stick around, it boils down to the fact that if you have certain diseases or you have a certain genetic makeup, you are predisposed to use nicotine and you might benefit from it. For the featured advocacy of the week, we find the seventh episode of The Advocate's Voice. And the World Vapors Alliance calling for back vaping beat smoking hashtag. It's not just a hashtag, it's a major global campaign. Ain't nothing to it, but to get into it. Yes, you heard that right. And here's the article that shows you where it came from. Apple now allows the App Store to host apps for firms that deliver weed. So, if you live in an area where the sale of marijuana is legal, either for medicinal or for recreational use, well, now you can open up your App Store on your Apple device, and you can download an app that you can go and place your order for whatever you want for your recreational drug use. But if you were trying to order a harm reduction product, sorry, that's a tobacco product. Not allowed. Moving on. Moving on to the only publication that is talking about what the real bane of society is today. Combustible tobacco. That's what's causing all the harm. That's what's doing all the damage to people's health. So, they're going to talk about it. Except when you dig into the article, you realize that this is a very well-crafted piece of propaganda. Talking about what the World Health Organization wants you to talk about. Because it's all about being a prohibitionist. So... They talk about how bad smoking is and they stay on topic. Smoking is horrible. It's doing all the damage. And it starts off, look at the very first line inside the articles is when it comes to smoking, all the facts are known, yet they have proved to not be no cure. Because you would think from a logical standpoint that if you understand how bad something is, well, you're not going to pick it up. 
but we all know firsthand when we smoked, we didn't give a shit what the news said. We didn't give a shit how bad it was for us. We did it because we enjoyed the benefits that it gave to us, be it psychological or physical or any of the other ones. We all live in today. We live for today. Very few people until you reach my age actually worry about what the hell are you going to be in five years or 10 years down the road. Kids certainly don't care about that. They're living in the moment. Well, this article talks about all the bad effects and all the bad problems that are associated with smoking, how there's more than 8 million deaths worldwide. Mm -hmm. And it talks about how there's so many people that are doing it, what the statistics are, what the strategic plan is on how to overcome it and all the data that's out there. And it was really enjoyable article to read talking about smoking. You never see articles about smoking anymore. Well, you get to the very end. And it was definitely World Health Organization playbook because it all boils down to the fact that um, on one on the question of whether e-cigarettes are healthy or alternative, Dr. Ayub says that smoking does appear to me more harmful than vaping. This does not mean that vaping is safe. E-cigarettes produce an aerosol by heating a liquid that usually contains nicotine flavorings and other chemicals to help make the aerosol. That's not how it works. Users inhale this aerosol into their lungs. Bystanders are also at risk of inhaling this aerosol when the user exhales this into the air, he said. And Dr. Ayub pointed out that the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has not confirmed that vaping's help. vaping helps people quit smoking. And Dr. Ayub pointed out that the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has not confirmed that vaping helps people quit smoking. On the contrary, many e-cigarette users fail to kick their addiction, he said. According to a report, 58% of the people who recently used e-cigarettes also continue to smoke cigarettes. Hey, dumbass. That's because most people cannot just switch 100% from combustible tobacco to vaping. It takes time for people to change their behaviors, to change their way of doing things. We are all creatures of habit, but you ignore that. It takes time. With every toke you take on an electronic cigarette, that is one toke that you did not take on an analog combustible cigarette. And the more you do this, the less time you will have to do this and the less desire you will have to do this. And your body will get accustomed to going from the four to 7,000 chemicals that are created every time you light tobacco on fire to the four ingredients that make up this liquid. Uh, Anti-vaping propaganda is brain poison. Yeah, it really is. Moving on to Japan, the Japan Times, cigarette sales in Japan dove in 2020 on a shift to vaping amid the pandemic. Yeah, you heard that right. The big thing in Japan right now is heat, not burn products. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't care that the tobacco industry is selling the exact same basic thing, but instead of lighting it on fire, they just heat it to release the nicotine, and it is basically a, another form of this. Not safe, not as safe as this, but that's to be proven, and the scientific data is out there. And it's just a matter of time. We're going to find out whether the FDA in the United States is a legit scientific-based entity or whether it's solely a political way for people to bribe officials to do what they want for their own benefit. Vaping is better than smoking. Regardless, in Japan, 
The fact is, heat on burn is picked up. And the people have gotten away from combustible tobacco. And they've gotten to the point now where it's either that or this. Or they're done completely with it. And Philip Norris International knows that it's just a matter of time. And their bean counters have determined they have 10, maybe 15 years left before it gets to the point where they're going to have to stop selling it because nobody's going to be buying it. So they're transitioning away from combustible tobacco, and it's already starting to happen in Japan. And Japan isn't the only place in the world where it's happening. It's just a matter of time. The writing is on the wall, and they know it. So what are they going to do? Well, they're going to start their process of diversification to other non-combustion items. And what's their first move here? Well, they bought Fertin Pharma. Fertin Pharma makes pharmaceutical products for people to quit smoking. And I'm sure they make other things as well. But that's not the only thing that they're doing. They have eyes open. They know and they see things. So, they know that lately with all this stuff that's going on out there, everybody has the misconception that nicotine causes all these problems. It's the tar that's in a combustible cigarette that does the damage. It's not the nicotine. Nicotine is a purified, safe way to consume a drug. Just like we consume coffee to consume the drug caffeine. It's that simple. Well, they have Altria urging the FDA to clarify that nicotine does not cause cancer. And just like I said in the beginning, the propaganda has been brainwashing people all this time. And the doctors actually think that nicotine causes cancer, that nicotine causes heart disease, that nicotine causes pulmonary disease. It does not cause the disease. Yes, it can be a contributing factor to certain situations based on the physiological effects of nicotine on the human metabolism. But it's no different than the physiological effects of caffeine in your coffee. It's the same effect. Moving on. Because here's the other part of their playbook. They know the cannabis is being legalized all around the world. Not just here in the States. All around the world. It's just a matter of time. It's like a domino effect. Once you get something happening here, it goes on to the next one, and then to the next one, and then to the next one. Everything tries to reach equilibrium eventually. And just like how everything tries to reach equilibrium, you also have monopolistic ideology that leads these high corporate multinational, international organizations to ensure they continue to operate. So they're going to take up every opportunity they can to make some good money. And here we go. Altria bought out 45% of the Canadian cannabis producer. The deal with Kronos gives Altria a foothold in Canada and elsewhere because this isn't the only place that they're going to be doing this, and this isn't the only place they're going to be selling it. That's not how international corporations work. Once they have something established, it's very easy to duplicate it, replicate it, and move it all around the world. Just need to make some minor tweaks here or there through the regulations based on the way they were written in certain places, and then you just drop it in, and off you go. You got Amazon in your country? I don't care where you live in the world. Is Amazon accessible as a seller of items to be delivered to you? That wasn't the case in the past. How did they get there? They took what worked, picked it up, moved it over, made sure it met all the requirements that it had to for the regulations where they're going to establish a new facility and they drop it in, start operating. 
increases their global capital output. And then it's time to move on to another country and another location to service all the potential customers that are there. They're doing the same thing. Put aside what you think of cannabis, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing that is being legalized. The fact is it's legal. And where it's legal, they're going to sell it because they're out to make money. It's the whole reason these corporations exist. And they're not the only ones. The Veil Vapor is now going to be able to sell, where it's legal, their lovely new starter kit. So if you live in an area where recreational cannabis is legalized, well, you can go into an Avail Vapor and purchase these things. It is literally getting to the point now where you cannot differentiate between analog cigarettes, electronic cigarettes, and cannabis products. They're all being sold in the same place. And if you're one of those little vape shops, mom and pop shop, where all you wanted to sell were these things, let me tell you, somebody opens up something down the street that has everything, I'm curious to see what percentage of your customers you keep. Because a lot of these people don't care about people's health. That's not why they open their business. Vail is now a corporate store with corporate agendas. They only care about making money. And the only way that they can make money is to drive out all the competitors. Because once all the competitors are out, then they can set the prices any way they choose. Look at what Walmart has done. Done in your town. You had a bunch of little mom and pop shops and you had, you know, maybe a little bigger, you know, convenience store, grocery store. What happened? They move in with the cheapest prices of everything that there is to offer. They offer everything that there is to buy so you can make it all in one trip. Well, little by little, all the neighboring businesses and shops shut down. Because why would somebody go into your store and buy this for $150 when they can go down the street and buy it for $75? That's after taxes and everything else. That's out the door. So what happens when all the comp competition is drawn out and pushed out of the way? John Eagle. Perfect example. They come in. They establish their store. Drastically cut their prices. Make them cheap as all heck. Little mom and pop grocery stores closed down because they can't compete with those prices. Once all the normal, normal, all the other stores are driven out, their pricing scheme changes. And now you get in the flyer, all these really good sales, but everything else that's in the store, well, that's all marked up so they can make their profit. Stop. I'm sick of your bullshit. Well, here we have a veil vapor looking at the market opportunity and following through on it. Moving on. Because if you don't want to get it from a veil, well, just get on your iPhone and you can order it and somebody will deliver it to you. Moving on, international news. Israeli smokers will soon find it much harder to light up. Health Minister Nitzan Horowitz intends to combat smoking addiction in Israel, including... Disposable electronic cigarettes, popular among Israeli teens. So, I would love to walk up to one of these idiots and look at them straight in the face and look them in the eyes and say, do you truly understand what this product is? Do you understand the harm reduction potential of this product compared to the product that you're also trying to eliminate, but that people are still going to continue using as long as they want to continue to use them. And if you had your child, which of these two products would you rather they have available to try? You can't completely eliminate something from the planet. It doesn't work that way. This is what I would choose for my child. But that's not what he's doing now. He's back to smoking. Combustible tobacco. Because that's what's easily available. 
And that's what's socially accepted on base. Shut up, dummy. Moving on. More custom seizures. Once again, this one comes from Malaysia. The Royal Malaysian Customs Department seized a 2.7 million Malaysian ringgit shipment. And it contained 1,276 liters of vape liquid suspected to contain nicotine. They don't have little test strips. They can find out if it contains nicotine or not. Well, the shipment was declared as atomizers devices in the containers. And the trade items were also found to have exceeded their expiration date. And that they believe that the product was going to be repackaged before distribution to the local markets. That's what they believe. Or is this just more propaganda? Disseminated to give people an impression of one thing when reality isn't what you think it is. Based on what you see in the newspapers. All right, moving on. Vaporesso parent company, Smore International, is now listed on the Forbes Global 2000 list. They put together this list of the top 2,000 stock that's available, and it's out on the marketplace. And why do they put them on there? <laughs> because they're growing. It's a legitimate corporation, growing, leaps and bounds, and it draws the attention of somebody that's not brainwashed into thinking, oh, this is poison, this is bad. When you have somebody that's just a numbers guy, they're going to look at it, and they're going to compare that company to another company, and they're going to go, Hey man, they're doing real good. Yeah. Compound annual growth rate of 28.1% from 2021 to 2028. Driven to innovate, the company has held over 1,000 technological patents with more employees in research and development than sales. Leading the vaping industry since 2009. Buy, buy, buy more of them. Buy more of them stock. That's a good company. That is doing things for the future. They're going to be around here 10, 20, 50 years from now. They're going to make some money. Bean counters. Got to love them. All right. So here's something I happened to catch. It was on Twitter earlier this week. Chinese vaping crackdown threatens to snuff out the industry. Nice. Nice title. It's bullshit. I'm here to tell you I'm sorry. They're lying to you straight up. How the hell is a company going to eliminate 170,000 other companies within its jurisdiction? And each of those companies has employees. So now you're going to have to do some math to figure out how many employees are in the vape industry in China. Do you honestly think they're just going to take away all their jobs, take away all these companies? Or does it make more sense logically that they're going to do whatever consolidation is necessary in order for that country to continue exporting the 90% of the world's consumption of harm reduction products. I'm not afraid of what the Chinese government's going to do. They're going to do what's in the best interest of everybody involved. Right? Believe me, they want to keep that 8 billion yen coming in every single year. They're not going to just completely eliminate this. They're smart enough to know they can't drag their feet and stay on combustible tobacco and hope that, you know, they can change what's happening around the world. Rip Tripper was, was right about one thing. Smoking is done. Vaping is the future. You can embrace it and capitalize on it, or you can drag your feet. And it's eventually going to happen anyway. So, I read the article. I put a link to it in the bottom of the description below, but I'm not giving any credence to it because this industry is not going anywhere. 
As long as there's money to be made, people are going to fight for it. Like here we have in Jamaica, Carreras cries foul. Leading tobacco and cigarette distribution company Carreras Limited has cautioned the government. I think it was a little more than just cautioned the government. I think he was quite adamant about the fact that excessive regulation is always going to be impossible to enforce and create a much larger black market than what already exists in the country. How's the black market in Africa? Hmm? How about the United States? Well, we covered that last week. Once again, down in Jamaica, they have the same playbook being followed by these idiot politicians that don't have a brain cell amongst them. The bill proposes to go beyond traditional tobacco products to include prohibiting the use of electronic nicotine delivery systems or e-cigarettes and other vaping devices in public spaces, although their emissions do not contain nicotine. So then what's the point in banning it? If you know it doesn't contain nicotine, if you know it's not hurting anybody, why are you banning it? Something that's unique in this thing is that this legislation is going to require an ingredient reporting system. I mean, that's kind of like what we have going on in the United States with the PMTA submissions. However, this guy is fighting against having a system like that because he says it's untenable depending on where you're going to get it from. It's because they've never established anything like that. I honestly think sometime in the near future, once we get past this whole thing with the FDA, once it becomes standardized somewhere, well, just like we've talked about with the corporations taking their operations and picking it up and going, there you go. Now you can use it on your country. Just a matter of time. Everything reaches equilibrium at some point in time. Something else that's interesting about this one. He talks about how we have estimated that 29% of the revenue from illegal tobacco sales goes to these entities. And by saying that they can't sell the product any longer is really taking away from their commercial activity. So he's admitting that there's a black market that's taking place here and that continually adding more and more regulations onto it is going to drive these small mom and pop operations out of business. Exactly what happened in the United States and is continuing to happen in the United States. It's this monopolization of all of it into large corporate entities where the mom and pop store is a bygone era thing. And it's interesting to see a distributor who's gone to government to fight for all of his customers and not expecting them to do it like what happens here in the United States. I'm not saying that there isn't distributors that are actively advocating for the industry, but most of the distributorships in this country have their lips sealed. They might throw the money into the advocacy organizations and the support, but you don't know who owns the distributorships in this country. I suppose if you've been around the industry long enough, you get to know them. But here we have a distributor in Jamaica who's standing up and saying, you guys need to do the right thing. A lot of people's lives depend on it. All right, moving on. Because here we have the Coalition for the Asia Pacific Tobacco Harm Reduction Advocates calling out once again the World Health Organization because the World Health Organization wants to do away with all open tank systems. They don't want you to be able to take the cap off of something and fill it with whatever you want to fill it with. They don't want you to be able to taper down your nicotine usage till you get to the point where it's zero milligram and it's just vegetable glycerin, propylene glycol, and a little bit of flavor. They want you to buy a disposable product with sealed things because they never heard about people taking drill bits and 
drilling them out, filling them up with whatever they want to fill them up with. Unrealistic expectations. That is exactly what this is all about. The World Health Organization has unrealistic expectations. They have unrealistic expectations, not just within trying to, you know, do away with all these particular products, but as in the whole ideology and the mentality of prohibition. Prohibition doesn't actually get people to change what they do. You make it harder on them. You create a black market that fulfills their need. How's the war on drugs going? We keep falling back on the war on drugs because it's the same playbook. And it has the same result. People don't understand history will repeat itself. Stand up for your rights while you have the opportunity to. Because once it's gone and you no longer have affordable access to the safer product, you go back to smoking because that's what they want. Moving on to Canada. Vape shop owner is worried that government may be pushing people back to smoking cigarettes. Yep. That's talking about the flavor ban that's going on in Canada that's being determined by Health Canada. Is Health Canada going to be following the World Health Organization playbook? Or are they going to continue to operate based on science and understanding that this is harm reduction and it helps your citizens and it helps people quit smoking? New rules from Health Canada are aimed to reduce the amount of nicotine that is allowed in the vaping devices, as well as forbidding the use of flavored vaping liquids that health agencies say are too attractive to younger people. I love how they can make those claims and not have any scientific proof to back it up. We just looked at another study that was done. Less than 15% of the kids that try to vape did it because the flavor sounded cool or the flavor sounded enough. The flavor sounded good enough for them to want to try it. Do the math. 15% of kids tried it because of the flavor. 80 some percent of the people use it because it isn't tobacco flavor. This stuff furiates me to no end. How can these elected officials that are charged with being responsible for the health of a populace ignore science based, on, based their judgments on mass hysteria? Regardless of how much the politician's words are angering me. This all boils down to the fact that we've got some guy here who's standing up and saying, listen, here is why it's wrong. Okay. You are going to literally drive people back to smoking because if you ban the flavors, you've literally wiped out all the brick and mortar shops in the country. They're not going to be around if there are no flavors. Go into any vape shop and ask them what percentage of the products you sell are tobacco flavors. Or I got an even better one. You don't even have to talk to anybody. Walk into a vape shop and look on the shelves and count how many bottles you have to get to before you find a tobacco flavor. And how many vape shops are you going to walk into that don't even carry tobacco flavors? And for the person that walks in and wants to try tobacco flavor, what's to stop them from saying, listen, I know you want to get away from tobacco. So the last thing you want to try is to have a tobacco flavor. that's going to remind you you're not smoking. Try something different. Anything. We got anything you want except tobacco because you don't want to be reminded of what it was like when you were smoking. How is that going to help you quit to be reminded of it all the time? Simple logic. Moving on. This wasn't the only story. Canada's flavor ban just has me totally perplexed. Why out of nowhere did this, where did this come from? This whole youth argument. If you were a numbers person and 
It was strictly about the numbers. How many of adults are there? And how many kids are there? If it's a numbers game, there's your numbers. Banning flavors for adult smokers trying to quit tobacco is a huge mistake. One that is going to have deadly consequences. Not could have, is definitely going to have deadly consequences. Earlier this month, the Ottawa submitted new regulations for vaping products to the Canada Gazette. It wants to ban all vape flavors with the exception of tobacco, mint, and menthol. Let alone the fact that vape flavors, there is no real tobacco flavor. They don't take a tobacco leaf and soak it in PG and then put that into e-liquid to make tobacco flavor. That's not how it works. We're going to move on because this thing has got me so fired up. I it just let's move on to ANS, MEA and S'more International announcing their strategic partnership to expand the region's alternative nicotine product markets. ANS is trying to become a leader in alternative nicotine solutions for the entire Middle East and Africa. MEA Mm hmm. Comes from Dubai, United Arab Emirates. And this leading company in nicotine alternative products plans to use this partnership to cover that entire section of the globe. You think these guys are worried about the legislation that's taking place? Nah. They know there's money to be made. And that's exactly what's happening in Michigan. Michigan Senator proposes a cigar tax increase. Except that's not what this is all about. They're not proposing a cigar tax increase. They're going to tax the shit out of harm reduction products. They're already taxing cigarettes. But now they're putting out a flat 32% tax on everything except the cigar. It's capped. You have to wonder, why are the cigars always excluded when it comes to this stuff? Because what do you think the politicians do when they get done going up on front of the stage? I know it's not a stage. It's government. But that's all they're doing is like an actor standing before them reading a script. They're not actually making any decisions or actually debating anything. It's all show. They've already made up their minds in committee. They come up with all the solutions. They tell other buddies which way to vote. And that's the way it goes. How the hell you think they can pass a 6,000 page bill? Nobody reads it. Everybody throws their five pages worth into it. Whatever it contains, we're all on the same team. I'll vote for your shit as long as you vote for my shit. That's all they care about. Well, here in Michigan, they're only worried about one thing, making more money. So, it wasn't about the um, vitamin E acetate. It's against a lot of put vitamin E acetate in here. as a smoke screen. They're worried about making tax money. 32% flat rate on all tobacco products and they actually defined what nicotine is by the chemical formula so even synthetic nicotine is now covered by this law don't believe me here's the link here's the actual text here's the definition there you go we got you covered liquid nicotine solution means any solution that contains chemical substance named 3i methyl 2 pyridine, pyridine, or C10H14N2, including any salt or complex of nicotine. That's derived from the tobacco plant. That covers everything. Because even the synthetic nicotine has that chemical formula. Yep, and it's not it. It isn't just about 
trying to get the taxes from the tobacco because they know cannabis legalization is an eventuality. It's a cash crop to take the place of combustible tobacco because they know combustible tobacco is not going to be around for very long longer. It's eventually going to wind its way down to nothing or less than 5% of the population where it's a minuscule thing. It's just a nuisance. At least that's the way they're going to perceive it. So what else are they going to tax? <laughs> Marijuana. Yeah. There you go. Have fun. Think it isn't happening near you? Think again. Battles taking place all around the globe. Every state, every province, every country, every city. Well, for those of you in Maine, fortunately, the lawmakers nixed the flavored tobacco ban in the final budget agreement. Yep. They talk about the, the JAMA study in San Francisco and how it drove kids to smoke, doubling their chance of picking up a cigarette. And they looked at all the data around them. They actually got the message. Somebody got through to them. Somebody got them to see some thing that we think is obvious. Well, Connecticut lawmakers are now going to kill the statewide flavor ban. Hmm. Yep. Fortunately, the Connecticut legislature recently killed a bill that would have banned flavored e-cigarettes in the state. Mm-hmm. Anyway, there's a link in the description below if you want to check it out. Moving on, because I got some more important stuff to talk about. And for those of you that smoke cannabis and you live in Connecticut, get ready to cough up the money for your weed that you're not allowed to have recreationally. But here's an article telling you the five things you need to know. It's legal to have it and to use it, but not to buy or sell it. Wait a minute. How is it legal for you to use something, but you can't buy it and you can't sell it? That means that you have to grow it yourself, right? Trying to think just straight up logic. It says you can smoke it in public, okay? But you cannot grow it. Wait a minute. How are you supposed to get it if you're not allowed to buy it, you're not allowed to sell it, you're not allowed to grow it? Oh, that's how. It just appears out of thin air. And just like that, it disappeared. Wow. Okay, now I understand why they legalized it. Yeah, sure, you can use it as long as it appears out of thin air. Right? No problem. I got gotcha. you. Okay, makes sense. No, it doesn't. Medical marijuana has different regulations. Well, of course, it should. It's like anything else. A healthcare professional is a doctor, and he tells you, Listen, you need to take a couple drops of this and put it underneath your tongue every day and do that three, four times a day. No more than five, okay? And you'll feel better. There you go. Okay. That's the whole definition of medical purpose use, right? Law offers protections for tenants, employees, and students. Except when they find out that they bought it, or they sold it, or they grew it. In which case, you're screwed anyway. Moving on. Can't help but to be cynical. It's ridiculousness. Nothing is simple. Nothing is straightforward. There is no black and white. Only millions of shades, billions of shades of gray. Even in the UK, UK Health Agency reaffirms the power of vaping to help smokers quit. Right? But they're still talking about banning it in pubs and all kinds of different places. Same places that it's banned with smoking. Somebody left me a comment says, 
We've never been, had that. You guys look at us, you know, like we're the holy pillar of harm reduction. Come move here and you can consume your harm reduction product without being chastised. But they never had exclusions like we would think places should have. It's a vapor. You think that you realize what the science is behind this and what's actually in here. And it's like, oh, you should be able to do that everywhere. Doesn't hurt on anybody. It's no different than having a fog machine at a school dance with little kids. Happens all the time. I've done dozens of school dances. And they had fog machine, they had lights flashing, everybody's happy, everybody's dancing, have a good time. There's no difference between this that has zero milligram in it and the stuff that comes out of my fog machine. Comes out of this, people have a problem with it. Comes out of a machine that's plugged into a wall outlet that I remotely push a button on to turn it on and it sprays for 10, 15 minutes until the heating element drops below the point where it can make it so it shuts off to build up that heat again and then I can turn it on again or it can automatically kick on and off. People don't have a problem with that. Well, that's not the point of this article. Not just me going on another rant. I'm sorry. I appreciate you guys watching. I'm sure some of you think I'm crazy getting up here every single week getting all pissed off for no reason. It's not for no reason. People's lives matter. And this matters and affects their lives. Gets people away from smoking. We need to stop the stupid war on vaping, get the science out there and get it in black and white. There is no other argument. Take the money aspect out of the picture and you'll see the truth. Well, here's the perfect little excerpt from this, okay? The nice recommendations are not necessarily a surprise. Indeed, a study published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2019 found that vapes were not as effective for quitting as nicotine replacement therapy, but more effective, somewhat disappointing for some activists. Nice does not go as far as to declare vape superior cessation tools, even though they are, the one scientific study I read said that it was five times more effective than nicotine replacement therapy. The other one I saw said six times more. I don't care if it's one times more. This should be preached and advocated by every government official, by every healthcare authority, by any healthcare provider as being the off ramp from the smoking highway. One last thing from this article I wanted to bring up is this vaping should all be part of a consistent message to people who smoke, encouraging smokers to give vaping a try. We know that vaping is a really popular and effective way to stop smoking. That's what it all boils down to. Is it safer? Yes. Then encourage people to do it. Period. Deal with the fact that you've got people that don't want to give it up later. Actually, you don't need to because I got that covered in the scientific portion of this report coming up in just a few moments. Moving on. Because here, despite me being pessimistic towards the UK not being the pinnacle that I want them to be. The fact is, Public Health England has accepted and adopted harm reduction and is encouraging people, encouraging physicians, encouraging healthcare providers to tell people to try vaping to quit smoking, especially if you've tried everything else and it hasn't worked. Well, that simple fundamental principle of public health policy is going to grow the vaping industry. And here we have Edinburgh vaping chain VPZ opens five new stores since lockdown easing. And we've talked about them before. 
They're up to 159 locations. And just take a look at the picture that they have here. That's not a mom and pop operation. That's a big, big operation. And I bet that isn't the only distribution center that they have. Oh, moving on. This comes from the Scottish Grocer announcing the Vipe is now views. British American Tobacco has announced the integration of its UK e-cigarette product line Vipe into the global brand views. I used a views device because when I first got started, I was out and about. I had my Bigfoot murder kit. I ran out of fluid. It's not that I ran out of it. I just left it at home and used up what was in the tank. And we had other, we were other, doing all kinds of errands and there was other errands to run. So we stopped at a gas station and I tried it. And that was back when they had blueberry flavor and it wasn't that bad. It wasn't enjoyable like this, but it met my nicotine needs when I'd first quit smoking. So these products now are being merged into one global brand. And from this point forward, all models that are introduced are going to be backwards compatible. So views pods can be used with Vipe devices and vice versa. It's a fast growing market is how they describe it. I understand it's British American tobacco. You can leave your preconceived notions at the sidelines. The point is they know it's growing and they know it's going to continue to grow. Year on year growth of 44% overall and 36% in the independent and symbols category in 2021. Last year, more than two thirds of the 686,000 regular vapor consumers used a Vipe product. Yep. He added that British American Tobacco invested almost half a billion pounds in reducing risk categories, including vaping. They're also doing a lot of science and a lot of research to make sure that the products that they sell, they know what the risks are. And I, I know you can argue that they're not going to release the damaging things out there, but listen, I've seen the scientists. Public Health England has used their scientists in some of the material that's out there. Because as long as that science is reproducible, it's valid. Moving on, since we're talking about science, let's get to the science. An educational intervention can help vapors use their electronic cigarettes to quit smoking. And this is a Eureka Alert, so which means it's basically a press release. Moffitt Cancer Center researchers say results could help expand the public health potential of electronic cigarettes. And before you get all excited, thinking, oh, wow, that's cool. We've got a nice cancer center that's doing research, so it's going to be heralded and believed by everybody. But once you read into it, you find out they have their own preconceived notions that they're basing a lot of this on. They're basing this on the principle that most of the people that pick up a vape are going to be dual users and they'll never switch. And they'll just go back to smoking cigarettes after using vapes for a while. Knowing that this is a harm reduction product and is 95% less harmful than the actual product. The more time you spend doing this, the less time you're doing full damage with the combustible product. So it's a good thing. But for some reason, these zealots don't want to get excited about reducing harm in people's lives. Regardless, this whole study is being done based upon the previous research that says that a certain percentage of people are only going to be dual users. Okay, that's not a bad thing. But that's the purpose of this. And the whole fundamental ideology behind this study is the fact that if we simply provide the education and stop belittling people for making a healthier choice well the chances of success are going to go up common sense 
We'll go down to the very end of it here. Our study indicates that dual users could benefit from specific interventions that leverage their ongoing e-cigarette use, which in turn could expand the public health potential of electronic cigarettes, said Brandon. I think it is important to note that while our materials did not endorse the initiation of vaping, which they should, it also didn't demonize use. We treated vapors with respect and passed along information to help them achieve their goal of quitting smoking. And isn't that the ultimate goal? Every vapor is a quit smoking success story. And if you've quit smoking, you are a success story. Celebrate it. Moving on. Because here's another scientific study. This one comes from emory.edu. Genetic risks for nicotine dependence span a range of traits and diseases. Wow, this is talking about something we already kind of knew about, but reframed. Genetic studies may help reduce some of the stigma society has against substance use disorders, while also making treatment more accessible, says Victoria Reisner, first author of the new study on nicotine dependence, who did the work as an Emory undergraduate. And this basically wraps up what we've already talked about before. There are going to be predisposing factors that drive people to smoking, that drive people to self-medicate with whatever drug they need to make themselves feel better. Happens with people with caffeine. How many times do we sit there and look on social media and somebody's talking about, don't talk to me until I've had my caffeine? That's a form of self-medication. Well, the exact same thing happens with nicotine. Nicotine use, is desired, craved, and used as self-medication for people with certain conditions. And science can actually break it down to determine there's a certain segment of society that has a certain genetic sequence that predisposes them to be a dependent user of drugs, regardless of what drug it is. Doesn't matter whether you're talking about hard drugs, illegal drugs, gray line drugs, caffeinated drugs, whatever drugs you want to talk about. People are predisposed because of their genetic makeup to seek risky behavior, to seek all kinds of different things. Higher polygenetic scores for the risk of schizophrenia, depression, neuroticism, self-reporting risk taking, a high body mass index, alcohol use disorder, along with a higher number of cigarettes smoked per day, were all indicators of a higher risk for nicotine dependence, the study found. The polygenic scores associated with higher education attainment lowered the risk for nicotine dependence, the results showed. If you look at the joint effect of all these characteristics, our model accounts for nearly 4% of the variation in nicotine dependencies, or nearly four times as much as what we had learned when we relied solely on the genetic index for the number of cigarettes someone smokes daily. What we're finding is that to better leverage genetic information, we need to go beyond individual human traits and disorders and think about how risk for different behaviors and traits are interrelated. This broader approach can give us a much better measure for whether someone is at risk for a mental disorder, such as nicotine dependence. So where did all this ideology and where did this idea per se come for doing this particular study? Why do we have somebody that isn't sit there trying to bash it or trying to preach it or focus on some particular aspect of it that we've heard about before? Well, her own words are, Nicotine dependence was interesting to me because the vaping scene was just arriving while I was an undergraduate. I saw some of my own friends who were very into vaping quickly become dependent on it, while some others who were using the same products didn't become dependent on it. 
I was curious, is there a genetic underpinning the difference between these people? Or is there something else at play? Just a few decades ago, it was not well understood that nicotine dependence could have a genetic component. Genetic studies may help reduce some of the stigma society has against substance use disorders, while also making treatment more accessible. It's very interesting. Doing all the scientific research that I do for these weekly news reports and reading some of these scientific studies, literally all of it sometimes, because sometimes it really is fascinating how they're doing their research, how they came up with their data, how they analyze the data, and where do they draw these numbers from to actually come up with the conclusions that are set in it. It's interesting. And it's nice to know that somebody, there are people out there, not just somebody, there are people out there doing real science to answer real questions just because that's the beauty of science. You have a question, go find the solution to it because most of the time it's only going to lead you to more questions because you just realized there's a whole bunch of stuff you didn't know anything about. And when you learn all that, then you realize all of those things have a whole bunch of things that you didn't know about and it grows exponentially. Moving on, time for our advocacy segment for today. An international panel will explore the global web of anti-vape issues and how it influences the public's perspective on vaping and safer nicotine products. Headline, The Battle Between Innovation and Bully Tactics, the seventh episode of The Advocate's Voice will premiere at 6 p.m. Hong Kong time or 10 p.m. New Zealand time on July 11th, 2021. Now, for those of us here in the United States, if you, let's say, you're on Eastern Standard Time, you have to understand something. The time is not what you think it is. This is on a Sunday. You need to watch it on a Saturday if you're in the United States. International time zone, time change. So, if it's Wednesday morning there, it's Tuesday evening here. So, if this is taking place Sunday night, well, you need to go to Saturday morning. Or thereabouts. You can figure it out yourself. However, I'm bringing this up because it's interesting to note that uh, the Greece-based public health expert, Dr. Konstantinos Farsalinos, is going to be on the panel discussing these issues. So, if you're interested, you can tune in. There's a link in the description below. It's on. going to be on their Facebook page. It's multi-streamed rebroadcast moving on this last story comes from the world vapors alliance and it's not a story it's an advocacy call to action i need you guys if you haven't already join the world vapors alliance i could do is give me your email they'll send you very infrequently what they have going on what you can do to help well they started a brand new major global campaign. Back vaping beat smoking. It's not just a hashtag. It's a major global campaign. If you're on Twitter, put the hashtag in there. I did it the other day. Back vaping beat smoking. Somebody was in there complaining about cigarette butts and this and that. Well, if you support tobacco harm reduction, you back vaping, you beat smoking, the butt problems eliminated. If it was only that simple, huh? Well, there'll be a link in the description below. You can go check it out yourself. That wraps up the vaping news, science, and advocacy for the 2nd of July. I know in the United States it's 4th of July weekend, but around the rest of the world, just another day. And I thoroughly appreciate you guys watching. I do have a uh, special thank you vlog that I've recorded. I need to finish editing it, throw some music into it, other things. That should be coming up this weekend. I did do the RTA review for the TFV 18 tank. It is coming along. I'm enjoying it. 
but it's not perfect. If you want to know more, wait for the review. It should be up in the next couple of days. Anyway, I thank you all for tuning in to this weekly episode. And I ask you to do one thing. Go be an advocate. I don't care if you spend five minutes a week. Every little bit that every individual person does contributes to the overall good from society, from these idiot politicians, and from those around us. Be good to each other. Peace, love, and hunky vape is all you need to stay away from deadly combustible tobacco. I'll see you all next week.